Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video for test project video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about test projects open SDK in C sharp language binding. All right, so let's get started. Test projects open SDK will help us write the native Selenium and Appium code in test project, which means we don't really have to incorporate the test project specific code within our existing code, all we need to do is just to use the test project's open SDK library within our project and it'll start working pretty much like how it used to work with our existing code base. That's the power of test project's open SDK. And it has got a lot of features which we have already discussed, something like Selenium page object model support, Cucumber support, extent reporting support, and test ng support while we're discussing about test project's open SDK and Java language binding. Not only these are the advantages that test project SDK has got, it also has got a lot of other advantages like it saves the time and effort uh, by downloading the different Selenium web drivers and Appium configurations. And also it supports a lot of different unit testing framework and also supports PDD based frameworks and different platforms, which is something a major advantage of having a open SDK. And also we can compare the open SDK with the legacy SDK, something like this. I mean, you can go through this documentation about the open SDK versus the legacy SDK in the test projects documentation page. And the open SDK has got a lot of advantages over the legacy SDK. And we are going to be using open SDK anyways in future, which is what test project team is thinking as a future as well. But today we are going to be discussing about the open SDK in C sharp. That is the major focus of this particular video. But in order to get started with the open SDK of test projects C sharp, SDK, we actually need to install the open SDK in Visual Studio's existing project for this package, the test project.openSDK and the latest version at the moment while I'm recording this video is 0.66.0 and it may change pretty quickly. And you should have a registered test project agent to see the test reports on the cloud and of course you need the token so that you can communicate with the test project. That's the only minimal requirement that we need to have to work with test projects open SDK to convert our existing code to use the test project ecosystem. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to my Visual Studio IDE. So I'm gonna open the Visual Studio 2019 and I'm gonna create a new project and I'm just gonna choose a unit test project with .NET Core framework and then I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna call this as test project open SDK C sharp and I'm just going to create and I'm going to quickly show you how we can actually use our existing code first write an existing code and then we'll see how we can actually convert that existing code to the open SDK of test project. So we are first going to write a code which is going to be using web driver manager and Chrome drivers and things of that nature, uh, which is going to be like a normal way of doing it without using the test project at all. And then we are going to use the open SDK and we'll see how it actually works. So for doing that, the first and foremost thing that we need to be doing is to install the Selenium package within our project. So I'm just going to quickly run this because we already know about installing Selenium and web driver manager to install the different uh, web driver options. So I'm just going to quickly do that right now. And once these two are installed within our project, then we can start writing the code over here and we can see how it actually works. So for doing that, I'm just going to call the uh, driver manager of the web driver manager. I hit control dot and I'm going to call setup driver of new Chrome config and then I'm just going to create a private IE web driver and we're going to use this driver to set our Chrome driver and we are going to navigate to the URL which is going to be the eaapp.somi.com website and we're going to automate this particular application using these codes. That's it and once it is there we're going to do a cleanup which is nothing but closing the driver. So I'm going to call this as teardown and I'm just going to run this particular test and we'll see how it actually works. I'm just going to build the solution and we have got the test right now and I'm going to run this test and we'll see how it actually works. So it opens up a browser for us and it's performing the login operation and the test has got successfully completed. 
So this is the usual way of working with the code. And all we have did is we just installed the web driver manager, the Chrome driver, and we just performed a simple uh, login operation on the eaapp.sami.com website. So this is the usual way of working with it. And there is no test project involved in this whole journey that we have seen. But now that we are going to make use of the test projects open SDK and we'll see how it is going to change the way it is going to automate the application for us. And of course, there are so many hiccups that we have in this particular code. For example, if the test has got failed for some reason, for example, if the BTN default has been changed to something like this, I mean, I just missed a dot. And then if I try running this test, this test is going to basically fail. But we have not taken any screenshot to tell that this test has got failed. And similarly, if this test actually runs in Visual Studio or any other test, it actually gives you only the verbose information, something like this, but it doesn't really give you a step-by-step -step information on how the test has actually got executed. So it only knows about the test one, as you can see over here, that it gives like test one, and there is a source and the duration of the test being executed, but doesn't really tell you exactly where the UI has got failed. We have to take a screenshot by ourselves using the test context or something like that to grab those information. And these are some of the babysitting work that we really have to do. And if the project is getting quite complex, then it's gonna be even more problem because we don't really have a way to actually manage those bigger test cases. And then comes the test projects help. I mean, test projects gonna be making our life even more easier with better reporting and also orchestrating our test in multiple different agents, in different environments and stuff. But we're not too much fuzzy about those details at the moment in this particular video. But the only thing that we are very focused on this time is to replace the existing web driver manager that we have to the test project's open SDK. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna comment this particular piece of code and we are gonna go to the packages over here. We're gonna go to the manage NuGet package and we're gonna search for test project. And once we search for test project, you can see that there are two SDKs comes in. One is the test project SDK. It is the legacy SDK code. We don't really have to worry about this one at the moment. The only thing which we need to be worried about is going to be the test projects open SDK. And we have something called the test project open SDK at specflow plugin. I mean, we'll talk about that later in our next video, but at the moment, let's focus on test projects open SDK. So I'm going to install this test projects open SDK. This will make our code much, much better. And you will see what I really mean. But once we do that, you can see that the installation actually fail and tells you that the end unit is quite older and you gotta be updating that. So you can see that this update is actually been popping up with three updates need to be updated. So we need to be updating those packages to make our test projects library happy to install. So I'm just gonna install or update these two to the latest version. And now if we go to the test project, the moment I click this install, it will start installing this time, as you can see over here, because it recognized that the end unit is up to date with the latest updates. And now everything is all good right now. And the only thing which I'm gonna change at the moment in this particular whole code is, I'm even gonna keep this Chrome driver over here, but just that the reference is instead of the openqa.selenium.chrome, we are going to be replacing that to the Chrome driver. And if I hit control dot, you will see there is something called as using test project dot open SDK dot drivers dot web. This is the only single code change that we need to be doing in order to tell that we are using the test projects open SDK and all the rest of the code remains the same. So I'm just going to choose this one and that's it. We are pretty good to go in terms of the code change, but this is not the only thing, but we have to tell that this code that we are going to be executing has to be somehow hooked up with the test projects platform so that I can get a nice little report, which I can do it in two ways. One is I can create a run settings file, or I can just grab the token and paste it like a private variable and pass it as a parameter on this Chrome driver. So if I go to this test projects and if I go to the integration, you can always get the developer key from here. So you can just copy this developer key and you can just come over here. Just type for private string token. And this is the token which I'm going to be passing in for this particular Chrome driver and tell that, hey, Chrome driver or the test projects Chrome driver, go and talk to the mothership, which is going to be our test projects platform. 
So I'm just gonna pass null here because I don't really have to give the remote address. And I need to pass the token, which is gonna be the underscore token. And I'm not gonna really pass any Chrome option. So I can just leave these things as it is. And once this is done, we're pretty good to go with running the test. And once again, because this token is being exposed here, even though it's a private variable, it is better to hold this in the run settings so that while we run this on the CI CD pipeline, it's gonna be much, much easier to maintain. But now that we have configured everything over here, and now let's try to run this test and we'll see how the test is actually gonna run. My test project agent is currently up and running at the moment. And if I go to my platform, and if I go to the monitor this time, you can see that my test project agent is currently online, which means it is currently up and running for me. At the same time, my browser has spawned here to start running. And you can see that one of the tests is actually running in my Windows agent as well. And the test has got completed successfully and it says the progress for the coded test because we are actually writing the code and it is auto generated on the local instance. So if I click this report over here, you can see that there is a test being executed and also shows me the test has got passed. And the good thing about this particular test is actually it tells you each and every navigation step it is performing, not just the test method name on the top of it. And also you can note that it shows you the test project open SDK underscore C sharp, which is nothing but the project name. We can actually change this project name as well. So instead of the test project open SDK over here, we can actually change that name in terms of the test name that we can pass in. It also shows that which browser has been executed to perform the operation, which is the Chrome browser, and it shows all the information for us. Let's try to make the test to actually fail so that we can see if there happens to have any screenshot for us. So I'm just gonna go back and delete this dot, and now I'm gonna try running the same test once again, and we'll see what really turns out in the report for us. All right, the test has completed successfully, at least running it, even though it fails. And now if we go back to our report, and if we try refreshing it, we can actually see that the test has got failed this time, and we can see that it has got a failure over here. And you can see that the BTN default has got failed. And it also gives all the information like messages along with the screenshot for us over here. So this failure is actually happening because the BTN default, we just removed the dot from that particular object locator. So this is the reason that the test has got failed and we can actually see that the whole execution is coming up like a magic from our existing test that we have written. This is the real power of the test project's open SDK in our existing code that it empowers our existing code to run without even a single code, without even any code change on our test side, but just that the configurations of our Chrome driver has been changed, but all the remaining code remains the same. So instead of this one line, we removed and added this particular code over here, and then we have added the token, and it just works pretty much like expected. So this is the power of Test Project's Open SDK and how it actually executes. But in our next video, we'll see how we can actually empower the same idea, but in the BDD's fashion of running the BDD spec flow, which is our existing BDD spec flow project with Test Project's Open SDK and Specflow's Test Project plugin. Thank you.